This week I've been putting four of the latest smartphone cameras to the test to see how they stack up. The iPhone 12 Pro Max, the Google Pixel 5, the Huawei Mate 40 Pro and the iPhone 12. I've been using the mini version but it has the exact same camera as the regular size iPhone 12 and I've been seeing how they all cope with low light, how far they can zoom and how good their video stabilization is. But first let's talk about dynamic range. If you've ever tried to take a picture of somebody stood in front of the sun, you might find that the person is in silhouette or that the sky is too bright with all the detail washed out. Well, all of these phones can use computational photography to blend together several exposures to preserve the detail. So I went to the park and took some pictures stood in front of the sun and here's how they turned out. All four of them did a great job. My face is bright, you can still see the clouds in the sky. I'm pretty happy with these. But I think the Pixel 5 fell behind a little bit here. Its portrait was more grainy than the others. Here's another set of portraits in the same park and pretty much the same thing happened. The Pixel 5 portrait had more noise. Let's talk about lenses and the trendy thing at the moment is to add a super wide lens so you can zoom out and fit a bit more into your picture. I actually prefer a telephoto lens because I feel like you can't always get closer to something you want to zoom in on but you can quite often take a few steps back to get further away so I always prefer a telephoto lens. All four of these phones have a super wide lens, but only two have a telephoto lens. Last year's Pixel 4 did have a zoom lens, but it's gone on the Pixel 5 replaced with a super wide. The iPhone 12 Pro Max has a 2.5 times optical zoom, the biggest ever on the iPhone, while the Huawei Mate 40 Pro packs in an even bigger five times optical zoom. Here's how that looks in practice because I saw some geese in the park and I took these photos from about two meters away. Here's as close as I could get without digitally cropping on the iPhone 12 and the Pixel 5. Now here's the 2.5 times zoom on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We're getting a bit closer, but look how close I got with the Huawei camera. This goose was working my camera. Gorgeous. <laughs> and here's another example of a clock tower in the park. Look how much closer you get with the Huawei Zoom. And this really does make a difference. Later in the park I saw a squirrel and you know they won't let you get too close. My instinct was quickly grab the Huawei and this is how it turned out. This was taken on a camera phone. So the Zoom here blew the other phones out of the water. To test the phones in low light, I went into central London after dark, which as you can imagine, is pretty much deserted at the moment. Apart from every now and then, you'd see a social media influencer and their camera operator striking a pose and having a little photo shoot in a deserted location. I went down to the Tate Britain, which at the moment is lit up for Diwali. All these were taken on the super wide cameras and all of them look great. Although I think the Huawei just edges ahead because take a look how much detail it preserved in these beautiful tiles. Those were the super wide shots. With the regular wide camera, Apple and Huawei both say they've made improvements this year to let in more light. Here are some photos from the wide cameras. Both iPhones took a decent shot. The Pixel did too, although again it was darker and grainier than the others. And then the Mate 40 Pro captured this and I was blown away. Look again how much detail is preserved. I also took some portrait mode shots here which came out very nicely. You'll notice the one from the iPhone 12 Pro Max is more zoomed in because it defaults to the telephoto lens for portraits. I have to say both iPhones and the Pixel captured quite a lot of lens flare from these neon lights. I didn't mind in this particular context, it looks quite artistic, but the Huawei didn't have any lens flare. Here's another location with some low light portraits taken on the wide angle lens. Again, the Huawei was my favorite because the picture was the most sharp. In fact, the Mate 40 Pro was so consistently impressive that whenever we were taking any extra shots or I wanted a quick one done of me in a nice location, I'd say, let's do it on the Huawei. It's gonna get the better shot. Now, all four of these phones also offer night mode and to test that out, we went to St. James's Park at night and it was very dark. This is all the iPhone 12 could see without engaging night mode. And here's how the night mode shots came out. All four of the phones took bright photos in the dark, with my winner here being the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And the iPhone 12 Pro Max does have an extra trick. Because it has that LiDAR scanner to detect depth, it can also take blurry background portrait mode shots with night mode switched on and this was really a wow moment. We took this in near total darkness and Laura came out bright in focus with the background perfectly cut out and blurred gently. It was very impressive. But what's more impressive 
is that the Mate 40 Pro can do this without engaging night mode. This was just a regular portrait mode snap taken instantly without a long exposure in near darkness. And while it is a bit darker than the iPhone's night mode portrait, you don't need your subject to hold still for a few seconds to take it. Let's take a quick look at video stabilization. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is trying something new for Apple. It has sensor shift stabilization, so it's moving the camera sensor around to counteract your hand movements, and it worked very well. In these shots, jogging in the park alongside my friend, the Pro Max definitely produced the most stable video. Of course, there's more to a phone than just the cameras. The elephant in the room is that Huawei still doesn't have access to Google Play services due to that US trade blacklist. And that means many of the most popular apps are missing from the platform, including from its own Huawei app gallery. The company says and is encouraging people to use something called Petal Search to download popular apps from unverified third party sources. And that's just not ideal, really. But there's no denying that when it comes to the camera, at least from my testing, the Huawei one is a generation ahead of the competition.